Hey everyone, today I will be reviewing Don't Worry Darling, the new Olivia Wilde movie. And this is a really interesting one because this is an extremely mixed bag of a film. There's some stuff in this movie that's genuinely really great and a lot of stuff that really isn't. I will say I actually did enjoy this movie. I had a good time with it, but I can't in good faith call it a good movie. This is a bad movie. This is a deeply flawed movie, but it's one that I enjoyed. On the technical side of things, this is an absolutely beautifully made movie. Um, Olivia Wilde's direction is very good. She's very competent behind the camera. She knows what she's doing. The color grading, the cinematography, the production design especially were all very stunning. If this movie has any chance at getting Oscar nominated, it's definitely for the production design. Also quite good was John Powell's score and the sound design, the costume design. This is a really well-crafted movie. It just sucks that it doesn't have the story to back that up. But before we get into the story, let's talk about the performances. First of all, Florence Pugh. Uh, I'm a huge fan of hers. She's one of the best actors working today. So as expected, she's fantastic in this movie. This is a very uh, emotionally demanding role, and she absolutely nails it. There wasn't a single moment in this movie where I didn't buy her in this role. And the funny thing is, I wouldn't even rank this in her top five performances. She's so good, it's almost a detriment to the movie because she consistently outacts every single one of her scene partners besides maybe Chris Pine. And talking about Chris Pine, he's fantastic as this creepy cult leader. He's so understated and so calm and everything he says kind of seems nice and considerate on the surface. He has this magnetism. You can't take your eyes off him and you kind of understand why everyone worships him so much. But of course, he also radiates this sinister energy. And whenever we see him, he's constantly in control of the situation. He takes genuine pleasure out of being challenged by Alice. He's completely unthreatened by it, which makes him even scarier. Um, moving on, Harry Styles has definitely been a topic of conversation surrounding this movie. His performance is, it's mixed, I would say. I kept looking for some sort of pattern or maybe strengths and weaknesses, but I couldn't find anything. It just seems really random to me because there are times when I thought he was really good and a lot of times where he was not. He ranges from good to pretty terrible to just passable, which is one of the many issues with this movie. Next up, Olivia Wilde is solid. I liked the reveal of her character that we get in the end, that she chooses to stay in victory to be with her kids. That was pretty good. I like how it kind of reframes the character and her actions throughout the movie. Part of me wishes that it was developed more, that that twist was explored more, but I also like how they kept it brief. I think the point was made and they moved on. Next up, uh, Gemma Chan was also great in this movie. I think she has that same kind of indescribable factor that Chris Pine and Florence Pugh do, the it factor or whatever you want to call it that makes someone compelling to watch on screen. Um, I just wish we got more of her because she was pretty criminally underused. Um, finally, everybody else in this cast, Nick Kroll, Kiki Lane, Kate Berlant, Asif Ali, everybody else was great. I had no problems with any of the supporting performances. Moving on from all that, I want to spend some time on what is, uh, I think, generally agreed to be the most mixed aspect of this movie, which is the story. And the best way I can describe this movie is like a montage. This movie is a collection of great moments without a good story to hold it together. Stuff like Florence Pugh cracking open the empty eggs, wrapping her face in plastic wrap, uh, seeing Kiki Lane smash her head into the mirror of ballet class and kill herself, the plane crash, the walls physically closing in and literally crushing Alice as she's cleaning. All of these are great. They're tense, they're memorable, they're well-constructed, they're creepy, they're very effective. Even the non-psychological thriller type scenes like the dinner table conversation where Alice confronts Chris Pine or the final chase as Alice makes her escape. All of that is really great, super compelling, edge of your seat type stuff. And that's just to name a few. There are so many great moments in this movie, great scenes, great sequences. Um, the problem is that these moments don't have purpose. They're just random. There's no explanation for why they happen or what their purpose is. A good psychological thriller has meaning. Scary hallucinations and sequences don't just happen for no reason. They all have a purpose. They have a specific meaning. There's symbolism. There's something behind them. They serve the greater theme. They serve the greater story. And this movie just doesn't have that. It's just a series of great sequences with no purpose. Also, just the storytelling in this movie was really muddled. 
Um, there are so many things that don't make sense. Why does Alice even start questioning things? Why does she even start having these hallucinations? Where do they come from? Are they even hallucinations or are they glitches in the Matrix world she's living in? None of these things are explained. Speaking about that Matrix world, the reveal makes no sense. It does not work at all. Um, the more you think about it, the less sense it makes. It's a reveal that does absolutely nothing to contextualize everything you've been watching up until that point. What was the plane crash, the rumbling sound, the earthquakes? Why was Kiki Lane holding a miniature version of the plane earlier on? None of this makes sense. None of it is explained. The pieces of the puzzle just don't fit together. And the reveal, which is supposed to make the pieces come together, just doesn't do that. Everything it also introduced about Alice and Jack's relationship, the backstory to how they even ended up in this place. It's extremely underdeveloped. It causes more problems than it solves. It just doesn't make sense. And then talking about the ending, I was left extremely unsatisfied. What happens to everyone else inside the simulation? What happens to Bunny, the Victory Project? Do they go after Alice? They must have her files and her information somewhere. If she killed Jack in the, in the simulation, does that mean he's dead in the real world? Does that mean Alice is now a wanted murderer? Does she have to go on the run? Does she tell the world about the Victory Project? What happens after she escapes the world? And the movie just completely drops the ball in the last act and refuses to answer any of these questions or pay off any of the things it's been setting up. It leaves a million unresolved threads and just creates more questions than answers. Also, this movie has a lot of small conveniences that don't quite make sense, like the doctor leaving his briefcase right when Alice needs it. So stuff like that didn't work. And then the most major offender is this absolutely confounding moment near the end where Gemma Chan decides to stab Chris Pine and kill him. And I've got to say that this has got to be one of the worst scenes I've seen in a long time. It makes absolutely no sense. There was absolutely no indication, no foreshadowing that Gemma Chan had any sort of discontent with Chris Pine, with her relationship with Chris Pine. In fact, it was clearly the opposite throughout the movie. She always supported him. She was always there for him. So then this twist just absolutely comes out of left field. It comes out of nowhere, and it just made me roll my eyes. It was so terrible, bad storytelling. Uh, that was something that easily should have been cut to me. It just doesn't make sense. Talking about this movie on a thematic level, this is a film that's not nearly as deep as it thinks it is. It's trying to be this nuanced and revolutionary commentary on gender and gender roles, but it just completely falls flat. It doesn't bring anything new to the table that we haven't seen 50 million times before. The extent of this movie's themes is just that gender roles are oppressive and control of women is bad, which is true and it's not a bad theme, but it's one we've seen many times. It's one that everybody already knows. It's just, it's just common sense. It's not even a theme. It's just, yeah, okay, what else do you have to say? It's just like a, a fact, I guess. The movie just drills down on it over and over and over. And it has nothing to add to the conversation. It has no complexity. It's not developed. It's not explored in any real way. It's just one note. It's just on the nose. Um, this movie also tries to comment on like incel culture and these internet personalities that use big words to create this cult-like following. But again, it does that without the proper development. And the best way I can describe this movie is that it's um, a style over substance movie that believes that it has more substance than it actually has. Um, the last thing I will say is that the movie also has a little bit of an identity crisis. I can't really tell what it's trying to be, and I don't think it knows either. Is it a psychological thriller? Is it a sci-fi movie? Is it a Truman Show type fake world movie? Is it a horror movie? It's trying to be all these things at once and ends up as this weird hodgepodge that doesn't really count as any of them. And that's really all I have to say about Don't Worry Darling. I know I went down on it pretty hard and I criticized it pretty heavily, but overall I did enjoy it. I can't call it a good movie. It's a movie that is very flashy and is very style over substance, but it's a fun montage of a movie with fantastic sequences, but it is a movie that kind of falls apart and doesn't really make a lot of sense the more you think about it. But I'm curious, have you seen this movie? If you did, what did you think of it? Let me know in the comments, the email, the voicemail, or the form, and all those links are in the description. Thank you so much for listening, and have a good day.